Hello, viewers. My name is Omo Yele Shore, and you're here again live on Sahara TV. Uh, we have an interesting uh, journalist out of the nation of Angola in the studio with us today. His name is Rafael Marquez, and he's here to talk to us about corruption, the abuse of human rights in the country, and some kind of uprising that's going on now in Angola, where a, an African leader, one of the longest serving African head of states, Dos Santos, President Dos Santos has been in power for many, many years, and uh, he's going to tell us about it uh, to date. Uh, Mr. Rafael Marquez, you're welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much, Mr. Shore. Yes, you run a website, a uh, very, very popular website with Angolans. It's uh, Mark Angola, Mark Angola, yes. and you report without fear uh, about human rights abuses, corruption. You do a lot of investigative reports. Uh, tell us uh, about what is going on in Angola today. Uh, today, the main opposition party, uh, the former rebel movement, UNITA, called for a demonstration in honor of uh, two activists who were kidnapped last year by the intelligence uh, and the police. And uh, they were tortured and executed. And information has emerged that the authorities fed them to the crocodiles wow. to dispose of their bodies. Mm. And the protest was to honor these two gentlemen. Unfortunately, uh, the national police uh, took to the streets with uh, even military helicopters that were uh, just uh, basically bombarding the demonstrators with tear gas. And as a result of that and the violence also that uh, started yesterday, one activist was killed by the personal presidential security guard in the surroundings of the presidential palace where he was uh, posting pamphlets. Mm. And uh, today also I have spoke to an activist who was shot uh, twice in the leg. So there's been much violence, uh, several people arrested and the police did not let this march to proceed. For those of our viewers who may not know, how long has the president of Angola been in power? Uh, president Jose Eduardo dos Santos has been in power since uh, September 97, uh, 1979, sorry. And S September 1979. 1979. Wow. So he's been in power for 34 years. Uh, there is no indication that he wants to relinquish power anytime soon. Uh, he's only second to Mr. Obiang from Equatorial Guinea, who's uh, been now the longest serving president in Africa by two weeks difference wow. from President Dushantos. So it's really a situation whereby we had elections uh, in August last year. The ruling party won comfortably with 72% uh, of uh, the votes. And uh, we have a current situation where people are not allowed to exercise their basic constitutional rights. When you talk about the elections, were the elections free and fair elections? They were not, but the opposition was extremely civil in not complaining about it. Yeah. It complained to the Constitutional Court. We knew how the elections were rigged and what happened, the participation of uh, Chinese companies, for instance, the database uh, for the whole electoral registration process uh, was manned from Portugal, was accessed only from Portugal. And uh, many other issues um, that came up during that period, and we reported on it as well. Uh, but the opposition was extremely civil, accepted the results, and has been trying peacefully to engage uh, the government to raise issues in parliament uh, within uh, during protests, but the government does not leave the opposition any venue to do its job, nor it allows civil society to perform also, um, to exercise its duties. And that is why uh, recently in September, the police arrested a young man, 17 year old, simply for uh, printing 20 t-shirts calling the president a disgusting dictator. Hmm. So tell us more about your kind of journalism. You are a very, very critical journalist. You're very critical of the government, but you work out of 
Angola, you're actually based in Luanda. Yes. How is that possible for a, a president that is so dictatorial shooting at people? What have they tried and not tried to do to you to force you to stop publishing against the government? Or are they not aware of your blog? Uh, first and foremost, when we talk about freedom of expression and freedom of press, we're not talking about an individual having the ability to exercise it, but every citizen having the same right. Yes. Secondly, I've been arrested, I've been in jail, I have been uh, convicted. Uh, the last time I was arrested was just on September 20th for covering the trial of some young protesters. And I was beaten by the special intervention police. Mm. And if I tell you the details of how the, these special forces used two assault cars in a convoy of five, simply to surround me and the activists I, were, I was interviewing, you can see the detail that I'm not operating freely and that I have been paying the consequences of my actions as well. Yeah, sorry, I know you have serious yes. cold. Uh, so now you, people know Angola for several reasons and one of it was that uh, it was actually one of the playing grounds for the Cold War. Yes. Uh, where the U.S. supported a party, uh, I think it was a UNITA. Yes. And uh, the, uh, Mr. Dos Santos had the support from the Soviets, yes. apparently. And, and then there was a long war in Angola, 27 I think, for 27 years. years because there war. was a time we had uh, uh, the Miss Universe here, and she said, you know, even though they didn't uh, participate in the war, it affected their lives uh, immensely. And now, Angola is known as a place for corruption as well. In fact, the daughter of the president of Angola is one of the richest people in the world as of yes. today. So is the latest uprising by the Angolan people, if you can call it that, is it going to lead anywhere? I think Angolans are ready for change because in 11 years of peace, people have increased their demands and their needs for better education, for housing, for jobs, uh, and for better opportunities of life. We have an economy that is um, concentrated. Uh, Angola's political economy is totally run by the president, his family, and a number of his cronies. So for instance, foreign investment in the country must be done in partnership with some of these individuals. That's how the president's daughter has become the richest uh, woman in Africa, simply because many of the companies, banks and others invest in the country, automatically uh, to have the projects approved, must split the shares of the joint ventures with the president's daughter. And the president has also issued many decrees, transferring assets, state assets, to his family. And that's what we have been criticizing. Uh, two examples, uh, just to have an idea. Recently, the president appointed his son to head the Angolan Sovereign Wealth Fund. Mm. And this fund does not have a specific uh, investment policy to this date. How much there is, is no there in the fund? Five billion dollars and 100,000 barrels uh, of oil a day. Mm. For the Goes fund. into the fund. Yes. And it's the president's son, and we don't know the structure that supports him, that does whatever he wants with that money. And that is what is unacceptable because these are resources that should be at the service of every Angolan citizen. And just to give you a, another idea, we have a university, a public university in Angola, that does not even rank among the hundred in Africa. Somalia's university in the current state of affairs ranks better Somalia's university. Yes, than the wow. Angolan University. Wow. Yet, in the past 10 years, because of the greed of the Angolan officials, we have established more universities, around 50 tertiary education institutions, more than high schools. Why? Because it is the way some African governments fill in, take the benchmarks for development. Hmm. So they just produce, must produce uh, graduates from these universities without the structures, the and, structures the and the knowledge that they need 
uh, to compete in the job market. So in the end, we have now cases with lawyers who barely can write. Wow. Okay. So let me ask quickly, uh, how long do you think Mr. DeSantos, President DeSantos, we hang on to power, just like every dictator in Africa has uh, fallen. Is it, is it likely that he will fall, or would it just, uh, this whole uprising, will it disappear after a while? Uh, there is the uprisings, and that's what we also call the hand of God, or Maradona calls the hand of God. Okay. Uh, President Dushantos has been sick. As a matter of fact, as these brutal repressions are taking place now in the country, He's been abroad for medical treatment. What was wrong with him? Uh, for know? what I have heard, he had uh, prostate, prostate cancer. Yes, and okay. he has just had a, a severe crisis. Last uh, June, July, he was for nearly two months away oh. without giving any explanation to the country. And without handing over power to his deputy? No, there was no... Uh, we just knew he was on a private visit and no information was provided. Where did he go? Where does he take trip? Uh, to Spain and then from what we know from Spain then sometimes he travels to the former Eastern uh, Bloc for treatment but uses Spain as a sort of uh, exit into, exit into oblivion. To, yes. yes. So, so you, don't, you think we may just hear that you know, he conks out, maybe he'll die one day. And how does this nation resolve the vacuum, the power vacuum? Do you think, is, is Angola ready if the Santo uh, passes on to them? No country should be held hostage of a one man's will. Okay. I think that's what is important for uh, people like myself and others, uh, to provide the critical analysis, the opinions to prepare society that the country does not depend solely on the president because we are 18, 19 million. Hmm. The president was not chosen by God, nor by the devil for that matter. So there comes a time when he must go and we must be prepared uh, to strengthen the institutions. The point now is that uh, President Obama uh, clearly stated and resonates across Africa is that quite often we have these strong men. African strong men. That weaken the state institutions for their personal benefit. Mm. And that has happened in Angola as well. So what we must do at this stage, it's to start pushing the boundaries uh, and challenging the state institutions to perform their duties so that the country is not ruled simply by one man's will, but by having institutions that have checks and balances on them. Uh, and when I mean checks and balances, just recently, the uh, October 15th, the Constitutional Court decreed that the parliament does not have oversight of the government because the president is the head of the government, and as the head of the government, no one can call Question on the president to account, for anything. to account for anything, hmm. unless he, by his own personal will, decides to, to do submit so. information. Yeah. You mentioned two things, uh, Obama and the influence of U.S. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also you mentioned China. Uh, when I met you in Turkey sometimes uh, ago, you mentioned how a hospital built by the Chinese collapsed uh, one day. But, you know, we are seeing increasingly a lot of Chinese influence. And also it appears as if the U.S. being, you know, partners in buying oil from Angola doesn't seem to care very much about human rights, you know, or helping to push out somebody like the Santos as they are doing aggressively in other countries in the Middle East uh, region. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, meeting uh, recently with the Assistant Secretary for African Affairs, uh, Linda Thomas Greenfield, uh, in which I also reiterated the need for the U.S. to have a more comprehensive and clear uh, policy towards Angola. But as far as the Chinese presence in Angola is concerned, I can just say that in the past nine years, we have seen an influx of Chinese to Angola that now accounts officially for over 250,000 people. Chinese people. And wow. informally, we're putting the numbers at half a million Chinese in the country. Hmm. What this cooperation with China does 
is extremely damaging for the future of Angola and for the present. One, because this influx of Chinese take away jobs. You don't see a cooperation whereby the Chinese are providing training, transferring skills to Angolans. Furthermore, you also have another problem. Angola currently now is exporting half of its oil to China. And Angola is the second largest producer in Africa, after Nigeria. And we're getting, in a return, infrastructures that are short in quality, that some of them uh, will not last. Uh, some roads have already been washed away by the rains. And uh, so what we're left, in fact, is with China taking much of the oil from Angola, we also have some strange private Chinese companies connected to the Chinese intelligence apparatus now effectively controlling the Angola National Oil Company yeah. and making investments all over the world, including in North Korea. And that money is not returning to Angola. It's Angolan money that is being taken away as a matter of money laundering for the benefit of a very small elite, five, six, ten Angolan individuals that have the secrets on where those funds are going. So it's new colonialism, and uh, there is no way we should be comparing now what cooperation is better between the US, China, or Europe. Here, what we must take into account is what is being taken from our countries and the inability from our, for us Angolans to participate in our own development and governance. And governance. So let me ask you a final question. Uh, there was uh, an incident a few years ago where some soccer players were shot at, uh, were attacked by, in, I think it's Kabinda. Yes, uh, the Togolese national, yes, team. national team. And it was shocking because everybody thought Angola is now at peace with itself and the rest of the world. Is, it, is the war over in Angola, like truly over? Or do you think that another insurrection or you know, even uh, armed struggle might take place again in Angola? The war effectively ended in most of the Angolan territory except Cabinda in 2002. And not a single shot in the name of war has been fired in much of the territory. There has been a continuing conflict in Cabinda that the government has not been able to resolve. And let me also tell you that in the Diamond areas, violence increased after the war by private security companies owned by Angolan generals. Mm. And that is quite problematic because the world tried to obscure the reality of the country by projecting Angola as the fastest growing economy in the world without looking at the imbalances of this growth in which only a very small fraction of the population or the ruling elite was actually um, benefiting from the spoils of war and from the dividends of peace, hmm. peace dividends. Well, uh, you're going to be winning an award soon from, I think, Transparency International. I received it on you received the 8th already? of November. Wow, congratulations. And uh, for people who may not know uh, much about your website and your work, uh, where can they learn more about what you do? You know, you're very, very powerful breaking news reports, investigative reports that earn you this award. Where, where should they go? They should go to www. Uh, macangola.com.org oh, okay. and uh, people will be able to find analysis on the current human rights situation on Angola's political economy and the damage corruption is doing not only to Angola but to a certain extent to the future of Africa because Angola could be a springboard for the development of the continent and use those resources not only for Angolans but also to expand uh, the goodwill uh, throughout the region and the continent, but that is not happening. You, you, you write in Portuguese and it's translated to English. There right? is an interface in English okay. and so citizens uh, from Anglophone countries can also uh, log in and uh, can browse the pages in English and find uh, much information there. How, how is your blog, I mean, website received in Angola itself and outside? Do you, is, is this something that it, a lot of people are reading? Do they have even internet capacity or bandwidth to deal with, which is some of the time, sometimes the problem in Africa? 
in Africa, we also have creative ways of spreading the news. Okay. Those who have access to the internet will use the Bush Telegraph hmm. to disseminate the news. What is a Bush Telegraph? Word of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, I just want to thank you for coming on our show, and uh, we hope to see more of you from Mark Angola. Uh, viewers, right. please uh, stay tuned. Uh, we have more. We're waiting to have uh, a baby Gelo, who is uh, an Ethiopian journalist, to tell us more about uh, the discrimination happening against Ethiopians uh, in Saudi Arabia. And other you know, shows are lined up for your enjoyment, education, and enlightenment on Sahara TV. Please do not go away.